In today's video, I'm going to give you a list of formulas associated with spontaneity. So this is going to include entropy, enthalpy, and Gibbs free energy. So here's the first one. The entropy change delta S of the universe is the sum of the entropy change of the system plus the entropy change of the surroundings. Now you can calculate the entropy change of the surroundings by dividing the enthalpy delta H over the temperature. By the way, this equation is associated with the second law of thermodynamics. Now it's good to know that the entropy, or more specifically the positional entropy of a gas is greater than that for a liquid and a positional entropy of a liquid is greater than that of a solid. By the way, whenever you increase the temperature of a substance, the entropy of that substance will typically increase. Now, the next formula you need to be familiar with is free energy change, or Gibbs free energy, delta G. Delta G is equal to the enthalpy minus the temperature times the change in entropy. Now, when using this formula, you need to pay attention to the units because, because typically you'll be given the enthalpy in kilojoules per mole, but the entropy is usually given to you in joules per mole per Kelvin. So first you need to decide, do you want your delta G value to be in kilojoules per mole or joules per mole? Typically this usually is reported in kilojoules per mole so what that means is you need to convert entropy from joules to kilojoules by dividing it by a thousand. When you have that, then the formula is going to work. So just be mindful of that whenever you are using uh, that formula. Now, if you need to calculate the non-standard Delta G value from the standard free energy change value, if you see a circle on top, it just indicates that you're dealing with the standard uh, free energy change. So non-standard delta G is equal to the standard delta G plus RT ln Q. Q is the reaction quotient. So if you have some reaction, 2A plus 3B turns into 4C plus 5D, assuming that all of this is in either the aqueous phase or the gas phase, then Q it's going to be C raised to the fourth power, D raised to the fifth power, over A squared times B to the third. So just like equilibrium, the reaction quotient is equal to the products over the reactants where the coefficients become exponents. Now this equation relates delta G to the equilibrium constant K. The standard free energy change is equal to negative RT ln k, where k is the equilibrium constant. And you can calculate k from this equation. It's e raised to the negative delta g over rt. And for all of these formulas, r is the energy constant 8.3145 joules per mole per kelvin. Now, sometimes you need to calculate the standard free energy change for a reaction. To do that, you need to take the sum of the standard free energy change, or rather the standard free energy of formation of the products, multiply by the coefficients in the balanced reaction, and then minus the sum of the free energy change, standard free energy change of formation of the reactants. So there's a lot of different delta G's out there. So just to review, if you see G, G is Gibbs free energy. Delta G is the change in free energy or change in Gibbs free energy. If you see delta G naught, that's the standard free energy change. So this is free energy change, free energy, standard free energy change. 
Now, if you see G of formation, this is the free and this is standard free energy of formation. So that's basically if you were to write a reaction where you're forming a substance from its constituent elements in their natural standard states, you'll get this value, you know, for the substance that you're considering. And you could look up these values in a table. Now, I do have some example problems that will show you how to use this formula to calculate the standard free energy change of a reaction. But I wanted to go over the difference between all of these symbols. So if you see the F, it just stands for formation. Now, you can calculate the enthalpy change of a reaction using a similar formula. So it's the sum of the standard enthalpies of formation for the products minus the sum of the standard enthalpies of formation for the reactants. So I'll just put R for reactants. Now you can also calculate the entropy change of a reaction in the same format. And again, I have example problems, which I'm going to post in the description section below so you could see how to use these formulas. But typically, if you have the thermodynamic uh, table data, you would typically use that data to find delta H and delta S. And using that, you can calculate delta G. But you could use the table to get delta G of the reaction as well. Now, if you plot the natural log of the equilibrium constant with the reciprocal of temperature, you can get a straight line plot. And the formula that describes that linear equation is this. The natural log of the equilibrium constant is equal to delta H over R times 1 over T plus delta S over R. So notice that this linear equation is in slope intercept form. So y is L and K, so you would plot this on the y axis. X is 1 over T, so you would plot that on the x axis. Negative delta H over R is the slope, and delta S over R correlates to the y intercept. So if you have a straight line plot of L and K versus 1 over T, you can get the enthalpy and the entropy from that plot. So once you determine the slope of the line, the enthalpy will be negative times the slope times R, where R is 8.3145 joules per mole per Kelvin. Once you know the y-intercept, you can get the entropy change by multiplying the y-intercept by R. And then once you have both delta H and delta S, you could use this formula to get delta G. So those are some additional formulas that you want to take down for notes. In addition to that, whenever the standard free energy change is less than zero or when it's uh, negative, what you have is a spontaneous reaction. And when delta G is negative, K is greater than 1. And that's based on this equation. Delta G is equal to negative RT ln K. So when K is greater than 1, ln K will be a positive number. But because we have a negative sign here, delta G will be negative. So for a product favored spontaneous reaction, K is typically a large number, like significantly larger than 1. And for a spontaneous process, delta G is negative, which means that it's also less than zero. Now, when delta G, the standard free energy change, is equal to zero, based on this equation, K is going to equal one, because ln one is zero. And when delta G is zero, the reaction is at equilibrium. 
Now, when the standard free energy change is greater than zero, that means that it's positive. And it also means that K is less than one. Now, K is never negative. So when K is less than one, you need to understand that it's between zero and one. When delta G is positive or when K is very small, what you have is a non-spontaneous reaction. That is, it's non-spontaneous in the forward direction, which means it's spontaneous in the reverse direction. So in the forward direction, it's non-spontaneous. It's reactant favored, which means the reaction will prefer to go to the left as opposed to the right. So those are the most common equations that you're going to encounter if you're studying spont spontaneity. That is, if you're studying like entropy, enthalpy, and Gibbs free energy. By the way, for those of you who want to print out of these formulas and more, uh, feel free to check out the formula sheet, which I'm going to post down in the description section below.